Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Don Charles, because today is the uh, 2nd of April uh, 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, also just before uh, we jump in, a quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel to which you can always um, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research uh, tab right there on the top and uh, like I said yeah it will take you to this page which we update on a daily basis so I believe you can find some useful information here now um, let's quickly refresh this page and to see what ha what has happened and how much it has grown um, it, from the morning because this is the morning video a uh, morning number sorry um, so yep uh, we'll quickly just refresh the page and uh, yeah, so we have, yes, increased, uh, the number has increased and uh, yep, slowly, slowly, uh, we are getting closer to that 1 million number. So if, as I said in the beginning of this week, that by the end of this week, yes, of course, uh, most likely, and well, we can see why we, we will be reaching that 1 million number. So let's keep an eye on this one, guys, for now. I hope you all stay safe. Um, now jumping into the charts very quickly here. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, this is the Euro stocks 50. Now I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, um, and basically mm, here the situation is the fact that it it's just basically neutral. I would say, um, although um, we are still let's say on a on a bit of a decline here, and we continue to trade below this uh, 21 day EMA here, um, shown as the yellow line. Um, well, everything's kind of still. It looks a little bit more bearish. I mean, we've previously mm, could have drawn here a downside line taken from the low of uh, February 20th, but as you can see now, it's a bit, um, to be honest, it, it has been vi violated and we we don't really uh, it's not really like actually uh, logical to draw this line right now so what we can can focus on is of course on some of the support and resistance levels now <clears throat> In a way, what we're looking here for is uh, we would like to see a break of this high here, the highest point of, uh, of March 26th, um, which is roughly around the 20, uh, 2,848 territory, roughly around there. So a nice good push above this and a push above the 21-day EMA here could in a way do the trick for more buyers and we could see this one climbing further north. Um, however, as you can see, it is drifting a little bit lower right now. Um, the today the price is uh, a little bit on the downside. Um, however, we still remain above the um, the high. Uh, sorry, the low, the current low of this week, which is around the 2,659 zone. So roughly around there. So we still remain above this. So this kind of still gives a bit of hope here for the buyers. Um, also, on the other hand, we can see that we are forming somewhat of a potential flag here. We do have ourselves a nice pole, and uh, this right now is could be could be seen as as a as a possible bullish flag pattern. Now, however, we cannot really assume that yet until we get that confirmation break. So, in in a way, for us to get comfortable with higher levels, as the, still the same logic applies. We need to see a push above the 2,848 zone, and then we could aim for higher levels. In terms of the downside, <coughs> excuse me. 
in terms of the downside we would like to see a nice good daily close um, not only a break but also a daily close below this 2659 zone and uh, then yes we could start considering a lower levels uh, of course we'll start aiming for these lows the 2428 zone which is the low of the 23rd of March um, or we could even go all the way back here towards the uh, lowest point of March near the 2303 territory so roughly around there there. Um, again, guys, for now, uh, we will probably remain a little bit on the neutral side because, like I said, on one hand, uh, yes, we mm, we are still kind of, let's say, uh, overall in a bearish uh, atmosphere here. Um, but from the very short term perspective, there is a possibility maybe to see some upside. Um, because we are forming somewhat a somewhat of a bullish uh, flag here. However, um, however, we cannot really talk about the upside yet until we get a clear break above this 2,848 zone because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and then, yep, more buyers could join in. Until then, uh, for now, we will remain neutral. <coughs> Excuse me. S&P 500. So um, the S&P 500 here, um, looking at this picture, um, on well, yesterday the index closed below this upside support line. I talked about this upside line a lot. This upside line is running here from the lowest point of 2011. And uh, yep, we can see that um, uh, April has opened, uh, the April candle has opened below this upside line. And uh, well, in a way, to be honest, although this is what I was talking about um, on on the 31st of March. <clears throat> Basically, what I was saying that if um, if we see the uh, price closing above this above this upside line, then there's a po possibility uh, for this one to kind of reverse and push higher again, maybe go for a bit of correction. But as you can see, the um, <clears throat> April. You can see that April um, managed to um, open with a nice uh, with a nice downside gap here and opened below the subside line. So this kind of changes the game a little bit, and uh, it kind of shows this little weakness. Uh, or should I say potential weakness um, in the index and uh, in a way uh, what I was also saying that in a way even if we see a drop below this upside line to get a little bit more comfortable with further declines we would like to see a push below the uh, 2454 zone uh, 200 sorry 2454 territory here um, and then we could aim for lower levels looking at the cash index right now we can see that the price is currently around 2000 480 zone so basically not far from where it closed yesterday it's just basically somewhere around here but uh, yep we'll keep an eye on this level here today if we get a nice good drop below this then yes we will start uh, considering lower levels again maybe even going all the way here uh, back to the uh, 2,192 uh, territory which is the lowest point of March so keep your eyes on this one, guys. Um, jumping into... Um, oh, and by the way, in terms of the upside, again, uh, still the same idea remains. We need to see a push above this 2,637 barrier, and only then we could consider some higher levels. Until then, we're not really doing anything here. We're just observing. But uh, looking at this picture right now, we are leaning a little bit more to the downside. Um, however, some confirmation breaks would be needed. Uh, WTI oil. So uh, we're seeing a nice rebound here uh, today. So after the uh, commodity managed to test and overshoot the psychological 20 zone, uh, it is now reversing back to the upside. It's trying to climb back here um, higher. However, um, again, I'll still stick to the same idea. We would like to see a push back above the 26.08 level before considering some some upside here, some larger correction to the upside because this 26.08 is the lowest point of 2016. And in a way, a push above this could in a way lead towards higher levels here, towards this downside line taken from the high of the 8th of January. Um, again, for now, looking at this, 
picture it is a little bit tricky here uh, because don't get me wrong it could travel a little bit higher here uh, fail to reach the 26.08 level and then reverse and then sell off again so um, that's why we have this barrier here the psychological 20 zone as the potential breakout point um, after which we could consider lower levels for now we remain neutral and just continue observing this one because again uh, if some if some would might say that uh, these are perfect levels uh, to buy oil right now uh, because it's at a very at a, at a very low level. Um, don't get me wrong; we are still the whole um, the whole issue here with oil has not the whole uh, and actually the whole issue with the uh, with Saudi Arabia Russia has not uh, been uh, solved solved yet. So that's why uh, oil might also come under selling pressure again if there are some new reports coming out uh, some worrying reports coming out from uh, from from that matter surrounding that matter so yeah guys for now that's why I don't rush into this yet uh, let's keep an eye on this one and let's see how this is gonna play out um, DXY so This morning I talked about DXY and basically I was talking about the 99.91 level um, and uh, let me just jump into a four hour chart very quickly. So basically as you can see the um, the index, the dollar index is currently balancing below this 99.91 uh, zone. So from the technical side um, some of you are probably looking at a possible uh, ascending triangle here. So um, you can see that the uh, still the barrier here, the 99.91 level continues to hold. Um, so basically we need to see a clear break above that barrier in order to aim for higher levels. And looking at this four hour chart, uh, we would probably uh, like to see maybe even a, at least a four hour candle close above this barrier and then we could consider some higher levels for now it's um, it's a little bit like I said it's difficult even though yes we are seeing a nice ascending triangle forming here uh, but uh, don't get me wrong uh, we have seen this happening uh, many times where the opposite uh, occurs uh, because normally according to all the technical analysis books uh, these tend to break to the upside however a confirmation break still needed in order to kind of um, aim for uh, from some upside here so basically the upper the upper side of this triangle would be uh, it needs to be broken before we could aim for higher levels and as I said before um, ideally we would like to see even a four hour candle close above this barrier uh, before uh, aiming for the further upside um, in terms of the downside if this suddenly starts dropping below this uh, upside line or the lower side of the um, the triangle then um, of course there it increases the chances of a potential slide here however uh, what we're going to do here is we would like to see a drop below the 98.89 98.89 level here and uh, then yes we could consider further declines um, now I, we would prefer to see a um, a close at least of a four hour candle below that 98.89 zone and then then yes we could aim for lower levels for now we are stuck here and uh, we're waiting for the next move we're waiting for that break either through the uh, through the 99.91 barrier here or a drop below the 98.89 zone so keep your eyes on that one uh, USD CAD so uh, very quickly here uh, this morning uh, I talked about this one and I was telling you guys to keep an eye on this one because because basically here what I was saying that um, in a way yes uh, given that this downside line held nicely the rate down um, it we could be very we should be very careful near this 100 EMA and this is what I was talking about this morning so this morning we were still around here somewhere um, and uh, then I was saying that in a way it could drift a little bit lower. Find some support near this, uh, near this 100 EMA here on the four-hour chart, and then rebound and push higher. Uh, because for us, for in order to consider the downside, we needed to see, and we need, we still need to see a drop below this 1.3986 zone. This is, of course, uh, don't get me wrong. This is a very cautious approach, maybe a bit of a conservative one. Uh, however, we we would prefer to be safe than sorry. And then yes, if we see a drop. Below 
below this and we see a four hour candle close at least something like that then yep we could consider some uh, deeper extensions to the downside because as you can see we did have an attempt here to break we did break that level but ni uh, neither of the kind of the four hour candles closed below it so <clears throat> but that's in regards to the downside. In terms of the upside, um, we are seeing a bit of a reversal here and a push higher towards this downside line. Um, again, uh, be very careful here because if we see a break of this downside line here and a push above the uh, 1.4325 zone here, uh, let me just actually quickly mark this uh, for our future reference. So basically, in order to consider some higher levels, we need to see a push above this barrier right here. Um, but it, um, again, for now, we cannot really talk about the upside until we get that break, at least of, a, of this downside line, and uh, then a break above this 1.4325, and uh, then we could consider some higher levels. For now, again, uh, we, the same as with the indices, we are a little bit stuck here, uh, and uh, we're waiting for that confirmation break, so that's why I don't try to um, predict this too much, let's say, uh, because uh, we are at a tricky spot, and uh, uh, wait for that confirmation break and then we could attack uh, this pair so GBP JPY um, here similar story we're waiting for a clear break through one of the highlighted areas uh, because as you can see yes uh, after declining heavily here from the end of February and then finding good support around the 123.99 zone um, the, com the pair uh, started pushing higher but it struggled to overcome this barrier here so the 134.32 zone roughly around there uh, that's basically the high of the uh, 13th of March and also kind of failed to push above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart um, so as as you kind of probably now follow my logic um, we before kind of let's say aiming for higher levels we would like to see a push um, above the 134.32 zone first uh, and uh, a break above the 200 EMA just for that extra confirmation because in a way we could see a push a push higher here we could see a break above this above this barrier but if it struggles to overcome the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart then well I mean we could see uh, maybe a reversal back to the downside so that's why preferably uh, we would like to see a push above the 200 EMA here as well and that's all on the four hour chart um, the next level then for us could be around the 137.21 which is the high of the 10th of March this year. So you have to keep your eyes on that one. Um, and in terms of the downside, we need to see a drop below the 132.43 zone, uh, which is the uh, low of yesterday. And uh, this way, if we see a drop below this ter territory, then this, this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. And uh, maybe more sellers could see this as an opportunity to step in and drive this one lower, at least towards the 129.79 zone, which is the low of the uh, 25th of March. GBPUSD. Um, still nothing, not much has changed. I'll be sh very quick on this one because, um, again, this is what I talked about this morning. Basically, we are seeing somewhat of a potential flag here. Um, and uh, we could we have a nice pole here and a bit of uh, flagging out here on GBPUSD. So it's a bullish flag. Um, however, before we could consider some higher levels, we need to see a push above this barrier here, the 1.2485, and only then we could aim for higher levels. For now, we're not doing anything. We're not even considering the downside here yet because, again, such patterns these uh, these are more bullish than, than bearish um, however we could see a bit of a drop here again so basically we could see this one moving sideways a little bit here for a while um, and uh, but unless this suddenly starts dropping below the 1.2195 zone here now this is where it could become very interesting but um, still as I said uh, all this territory uh, if we look at the bigger picture all this territory would be somewhat of a neutral one for us because for us to, con to 
get comfortable with lower levels, we need to see a drop below the 1.1950, which is the lowest point of 2016. And uh, finally, Euro USD. So here I was talking about this one this morning, and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this potential falling veg pattern. So as you can see, uh, the pair struggled, continued to struggle to overcome this 1.0952 territory, and uh, it did get a few overshoots, but it in, uh, eventually kind of, or should I say, overall it could still uh, just struggle to overcome it and uh, we saw this one drifting back down so um, the uh, what I was saying is what I was mentioning as well today this morning uh, that in order to aim for lower levels we need to see uh, the pair at least closing at least a four hour candle below the uh, 1.0888 zone right here and uh, this highlighted one here on the, on, on the downside and then yes because then we could uh, we could break the lower side of the um, this falling veg, and in a way we could just ignore the uh, the veg pattern um, and focus on this downside line just on its own. However, like I said, for now you can see that there is a hold up near this area, near the uh, lower bound of the um, falling veg and near this 1.0888 territory. So let's see if it can continue holding. If it can and we see a reversal here to the upside, now all eyes are going to be on this on this upper side of the uh, falling veg because as we know that these patterns tend to break to the upside um, and uh, we could see this one traveling higher. Now uh, this morning I was talking about this barrier for after which uh, after a break of which uh, we could get a little bit more comfortable with further upside and this is the 1.1037 zone uh, the high of the uh, 31st of March uh, however given that we have managed to shift a little bit more now to the to the, to the right um, Basically, um, we will consider some higher levels if we get a push above this level here, the one that I was talking about, the one that kind of kept on holding the rate down today. So that's the 1.0552. And uh, at the same time, if we get a break above this, we would also break the this upper side of the falling veg. So that's why uh, we would like to see, like I said, we will consider uh, some higher levels if we get a push above this level, um, above this 1.0952. However, to still to get more comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push above this 1.1037 because even if we get a push above the 1.0952, okay, yes, we will aim for a bit of upside. However, you can see that, that we do have here the 100 EMA, the, the 200 EMA, and also somewhere around here is the 21 EMA, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. So a little bit higher. But uh, to be honest, uh, if we get a break above this, then we would also climb above the 21 EMA here on the four hour chart. Um, so that's why these, uh, the t mainly it's going to be the 200 EMA, which could present a bit of uh, resistance here uh, for this pair. So that's why the more comfortable level for us still remains the 1.1037, after which, uh, after a break of which we could consider some higher levels, but uh, we will start maybe looking at uh, slightly higher levels here if we get a push uh, we'll get a little bit let's say we'll get a little bit more positive uh, if we get a push above the 1.0952 zone so keep your eyes on this one however for now it seems that the, the upside might be slightly off the table um, so let's see how this 1.0888 level will play out because if we get a four hour at least a four hour candle close below this then yep we will start considering some lower levels guys so I hope you found it useful thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end and uh, if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning um, around uh, s around six o'clock GMT time um, so yep I hope, like I said, guys, I hope you stay safe. I hope you, uh, if you're trading, uh, have, uh, well, also stay safe in trading, trading wise. Uh, don't over trade, have your stop losses in place. And yep, guys, like I said, let uh, catch my video tomorrow where um, I'm going to review some of these instruments, some new ones as well, see how everything is getting along. And by the way, don't forget that tomorrow we do have the uh, US NFPs, so it could be a big day. Um, and, or should I say, it could be an interesting day. Um, so, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your likes and views. And I'll, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.